My name is Adrian Nanchev, and this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. So that's why I started this podcast, Become Remarkable, to bring you people from all over the world, whether entrepreneurs or not, to share with you their story, their journey, their experience, who they are and why they are doing what they're doing. So today I have with me Ming Wu, all the way from England. So Ming, what we normally do in these podcasts, we have a carry-on question. And that's a question that's determined from the previous guest. So okay. Chuck Uma, or Chuck Uma from Washington, D.C., wants to know, what is the mistake you've made and how could that have changed you? What, the mistake I've made? What, the one mistake or is it... Um, mistake separate... you made and regret. Oh, a mistake I've made and regret. Oh, there's there's many. <laughs> The, the one mistake I, I regret is actually not doing things sooner, I think. That, that's, that's, that's the one, yeah, the one I, I tend to go back on and talk to everyone on is, is, is not doing what we're doing right now at a, at a sooner, um, possible time. Yeah, I agree. Same. I, I think this, this, this kind of stuff could have been done three odd years ago. Four three certainly years ago and it's like well better late than never and uh, exactly I, yeah but but as a side note because i have like re- I, i've i'm thinking ahead thinking what will i regret also the way i see it is that you know age 120 odd on the deathbed thinking i'll have more regrets from inaction i mean action uh, regrets from action as opposed to inaction thinking why did i do this instead why why did i spend stupid time working on that stupid thing what a waste yeah, but but the part of part of that kind of gives more depth into the future things that that m- might happen um, because you got the experience of inaction or action, and 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 then things start start to happen. That that's what we found um, doing doing what we're doing right now. And what are you doing? What you're doing? Um, we started a maker space called the Makers Guild um, in here in Portsmouth in the UK. And and that is to help everyone else achieve what they're trying to achieve, like turning hobbies into a job type scenario, turning their interests, finding people to help others um, achieve better things or, you know, develop products that they want to develop. And in in, in the case of um, here in the South, there's not much of that. It's yeah, it's all based in London. Um but in everywhere else, it's unlike in, let's say, in the States where every single town and city has a few maker spaces dotted here and here and there. Um, in Portsmouth, uh, space is like a premium because it's an island city. So, so finding, finding sp- a space to do that, it's, it's, um, took us two years. Oh, yeah. Um... <laughs> Port, yeah, okay. Uh, that Makers Guild, what is that exactly? That kind of sounds like a... I, w- I want to describe it as a self-employed factory, helping people to become self-employed, but that's a way of a simplification. Yeah, it's actually a, a pretty spot-on description, um, as, as well as the point of um, education and providing those who don't have access to university or um, uh, college-level degrees... Um, access to resources that are available to them to the general public that that's one aspect of what we're trying to do um and and, it, and it's gaining traction it, it's it's getting people um those who are from dis- disadvantaged background into engineering into science and and from a from a basic level anyway um to spur on their their imagination for if even if it's um a homeschooled eight-year-old to um, a retired 80-year-old. It really depends on what their their interests are. Why did you start this? Um, the, the basic simplification of this answer is I needed a space myself to make stuff. Otherwise, my parents would kick me out of the house again. Make what exactly? Um, I'm an industrial designer by trade, so um, we do a lot of prototypes, Um using uh 3d printers or actually handmade in certain materials um so having the equipment to do that and obviously when you get the equipment you need the space to do it as well um 
that is is preferably not your home or or not anywhere where you sleep um and um yeah do, doing doing that and creating the makers guild was was a no-brainer for us and and um there are there are three co-founders including myself all on the same kind of boat um all needing a space to make stuff yeah industrial design i can't help but think that's got something to do with computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacture yeah and then user experience and designing the the forms itself um, how people would use it. Um, it's it's the fa- most famous example is the 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 items that um, Apple have created. It's, it was very big on industrial design and very big on user experience, um, which is probably the reason why there's a lot of following behind them because they're 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 the ones who are doing it the best in terms of reputation wise. And obviously, um, Jonathan Mives um, being being the lead on that. All right, so when it, okay, so when you say like user experience and uh, design in general, because also what what comes to mind is product design. Yeah. As a, as a quick side note, I'm very curious. Then, how important is design in everything? Everything that's man-made is has gone through some sort of design or engineering or scientific research. So in 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 that aspect. Everything that you touch that that is made by a person has has gone through some form of product design or industrial design. Um, those two terms are practically the same. Um, it's just um, different names from different countries. And um, yeah, it's it's to what you use with your hands, what you look at, um, even to the way you think is is user experience. And and a lot of that might be down to intuition. Um, but a lot of that is actually behavioral adaptations to specific objects that are designed for people to use it in that certain way. And um, in that aspect is is the reason why there's the term like hacking, which is using items that are not designed for that pu- the purpose um, that is being designed for in in a totally different way, which is which is. You know the, the the fundamental term of hacking things. Yeah, I remember I remember years ago watching a little behind the scenes thing with uh, this company. I think they're making video games, and the yeah. programmer and the programmer said something like, um, like sarcastically, it's it's very difficult to program a computer to do mind reading, so we have to guess how the how the player or how the user is going to interact with the, with the product. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's yeah down to a video game or down to a um, a pen, for example. It's 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 how people interact with it. It's it's fundamentally how it shaped its design. Yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah, in fact, this pen here I've got in my hand. Uh, the uh, it's a clicker pen. Okay, and I just as you mentioned this, I'm just realised that the, the 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 part you press isn't like a stub. It isn't like a stub. It's more of a curve. So it's much more smooth yeah. to to hold and press and click with. Just thinking about it now. Um, so with your Makers Guild, I like the name of that, by the way, the guild. That, yeah, that we're, we're, yeah, we're based inside the um, a, a guild hall, the town hall. So um, it was a natural joke to call it a guild. Yeah, I like that. You don't, it's rather archaic. You don't see that very often these days. <laughs> uh, so so you, talk about the skills that you share and teach. Are you a charity? Or, are you a business? We're, you must be a company. Yeah, um, we're we're registered as a community interest company in the UK, so that's like a social enterprise, an official term for social enterprise. But a social enterprise is more of a verb. It's more of what business is doing to be socially enter, like you know, so to socially beneficial. Um, but um, from from our perspective, is having a uh, having being a community interest company it just kind of officializes that and gives trust to other people that we're in it actually for the community not for um making uh, a huge amount of profit yeah i heard that getting um the social enterprise the, the, the certificate or the authority is much easier like paperwork wise and bureaucracy wise than, than getting a charity status um pretty much um charity means that everything financial wise has to be public 
Um, so it's you're, you're holding yourself accountable to the public. Um, for from a, a CIC um, community interest company way of um, doing things is pretty much like um, like a, a public com- uh, public li- li- uh, a limited company exactly the same in terms of structure, but there's the extra clause of you can apply for funding um, that can be crossed between uh, charitable or or um, CIC or anything to do with the community interest funding. So so there is that aspect, but in in terms of paperwork, yes, yeah, definitely less than charity, but more than a limited company. So how is it going, and what kind of skills do you teach? Um, it's it's going great. It's uh, f- uh, f- around about three to four months in since opening in June, and um, we've we've got uh, residents who's, who are moving in. Their 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 range of different skills from digital sculptors, and um, that that used to work in the video game industry, but it turned into puppeteering, um, or creating figures for board games. Um, that's quite cool. Um, interior designers and jewelry designers. They they've moved in for the last. Um, in the last three months, which has been brilliant. And um, we've been holding classes for homeschool students, um, eight plus, um, to give them access to design technology tools that they usually don't have access to. Um, and now we're, now we're talking to um, secondary schools and sixth form colleges um, to, to bring that skill down from a university level, you know, engineering level, down down, down through to a younger generation so they understand it better. You mean, when you say engineering, you mean like a vocabulary? It's more of a skill level. So um, what we're trying to do is bring um, degree level understanding and, and knowledge down to, you know, those who are eight year, eight year old, and then they can have that kind of knowledge in the background and know how to make things and accelerate whatever they're going to be do in the future. Because everything, if they're going to make something that, um, or anything in, 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 in the next 10 years, for example, um, knowing a bit of engineering is, is it frees up a lot of um, resistance to, to make something. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I agree. Uh, always, always want to be curious. Um, just knowing a little bit about a little bit about everything, because the way yeah. I see it is that if we were alive, say five hundred years ago, we would have to know a bit about warfare and agriculture and all these things like uh, setting up businesses and podcasting. All these things will be irrelevant, and, you know, <laughs> and economics, all that crap. You know, uh, law diminishing marginal utility stuff like that will be totally irrelevant. You know, five hundred years ago, but the, the day and age we live in today, it's worthwhile knowing a little bit about everything. Entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur, engineering. Uh, the mind, a little bit industrial design, some of the terminology, just so you know a little bit, just a smidgen or a conversational talk with other people, very handy. Yeah, exactly, and and from that you you can get to um, specialize in a specific field, but you still know all of that, so it, it it bridges the gap between different industries. That that's that's what we're what we want fund, fund, fundamentally want to do is is to bridge that gap between the like, you know, small businesses and and those who are self-employed individuals who are looking into going into that industry but they don't have the space to do so. Yeah, and speaking of industry, you mentioned something. You mentioned something about the situation in the south of England, uh, where most something like mostly most of the industries are up north, or some, most of the agencies are in London and. In the rest of the place, well, like where you are in Portsmouth and Kent and Dover and elsewhere in Bournemouth, there's there's nothing that's lacking in something. You were it's it to... yeah, it's 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 lacking in um, what we think it's lacking in um, communication. Businesses they are there, but they don't necessarily want to talk to each other because they are obviously uh, they are getting outsourced um, jobs, for example, and they want to keep their their clientele a secret or something like that, or. Or the fact that they've got a factory down here or um, workshops, but they don't want to share it because obviously it, it becomes a liability if you let someone else use your equipment. If they break it, then you have to repair it. You can't just charge someone else to, to repair everything. And then there's going to be a massive legal battle. We were talking about that yesterday um, um, to to someone, um, to our local MP. And um, and, and, f- and from that, we, we needed to create like a um, like a. A space where people can collaborate more um that the, the equipment's all really 
there shared um it might not be the new top of the range stuff but secondhand things that we can repair if it breaks because secondhand things is is you don't really you're not really that precious um in protecting um it, compared to spending a million pounds on a piece of equipment um so so from from that conversation it's it's how to get more companies smaller companies to to innovate more to collaborate with other companies to hopefully create innovation that might happen in the future down here um away from let's say central london which might be very more um expensive in terms of developing um and it's it's although there are plenty of spaces like that in in london it's it's what about everyone else down in different parts of the country um especially down south so we're as a maker space um is the first one in portsmouth and um and the surrounding area that is thinking this way there there has been one or two who are like more hobbyist type um garage spaces that are our maker spaces in 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 its in its own entity but as a as a place where businesses can collaborate um it's 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 a new concept for Portsmouth for sure and and the the city council has been quite interested in it um but it kind of sounds like there's a problem with the culture as well as like the the tools and the accessibility yeah um so say um again um with the big cities every everyone's so condensed down into into obviously there there will be a lack of space in some cases so having a maker space is perfect it's the same case of portsmouth but no one's really thought about it this way because it's it's a it's a london culture let's say it's or it's a, it's a it's a, a us culture where everyone's collaborating more and, and especially in like say places like silicon valley where people can jump from job to job quite easily um to from different con- um not different countries different companies sorry um and um although that might be a generalization um but it it is that of encouraging more of this happening in in Portsmouth which is starting to happen um the creative culture is starting to to be more recognized um because it's mostly outside of london it'll be brighton um which is really big on its uh, creative culture and and yeah and they're slowly moving down down the south coast yeah i wouldn't say there's hmm how are you facilitating that creative culture you're you're teaching you're teaching people are you getting speakers in or whatever because i'm I'm not too sure this isn't generally new to me yeah i can't really picture this much of a collaborative culture here either in wolverhampton (laughs) <laughs> it's when it's it's the opportunities that you provide for giving someone the space to do things in and then obviously when you have a range of equipment everyone has a niche knowledge of something and from that uh, you can share knowledge you can share skills and ultimately if someone says i got an idea and someone else believes in it or believes that it would work or wants want it to work because it might be a fun project it might be a financially viable project anything around that kind of concept um having the space and the equipment to do so without the need to buy everything from scratch just gets people more together collaborate yeah together yeah so it's economy of scale combined with hot desking yeah exactly it's, it is a bunch of equipment plus plus a place place to work what kind of equipment uh we've got a uh, four 3D printers at the moment uh, one's been converted into a paste extruder so we can print chocolate yep well, yeah well, invite some chocolateers <laughs> over then that's pretty cool um I, I i i am designing chocolates for a few chocolateers which is quite funny enough when i said that i'm designing chocolates and then making a 3D printer that can print out chocolate which is quite hilarious although it can print ceramics and everything like that um chocolate is the one that everyone's more excited about yeah I, I agree but um i think that's pretty cool i think everyone really should have like a skill you know like how to make beer or wine or chocolate or how to make vinegar yeah. or how to make shoes or how to make a table and i think chocolate t- how long have we been doing that um the machine's not up and running yet it's still in pieces because i'm waiting for some parts to come through from um from in in um because it's just in transit delivery somewhere um it's only small parts it's it's less than 20 quid to upgrade a, um something that um was a broken 3D printer um uh and then other equipments we we're getting the laser cutter in in the next few weeks and um we've got the saws we've got drills we've got pillar drills um everything would work and most of the plastic work um few things that um 
light metal work equipment is is there because of the building that we're in um metal work is 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 not really that um appropriate because of the noise level but yeah ev- everything in terms of prototyping and and making things rapid prototyping is, is um which is one of the terms in industrial design it's 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 all there ready um it's it's almost exactly the same as what you find in the, in a in a design studio um or um or um a university classroom um and also we have access to ports of universities equipment as well because i'm i'm still a research student in medical technology so i run in to one of the workshops use the equipment say hi to the technicians and run out again yeah when you say um when you say uh, equipment and, and that all i imagine straight away was things like vices and pillar drills and yeah aprons yeah. and aprons wood, and everything wood, wood saw wood chips everywhere that's all i imagined machine yeah right. but then you say it's, it's, 3d yeah. printer and it's like ah this is serious stuff future proof as well a nice little trend there going off uh that's that's actually really cool that is um you mentioned the medical research are you are you writing a dissertation or i've just submitted my thesis last week oh, um on a, on a, a new way of collecting healthcare data hang on a minute, as a side note i'm very curious then it went from medical doing medical research. I'm guessing with the University of Portsmouth. Yep. To starting up the social enterprise company. Yeah, because because it works hand in hand. It's a laboratory in, in some senses. Right. It's product development because that's that's what the the project is for the research. It's it's developing a new way or a novel novel way as it's been described to to make um, healthcare data collection more automated. By setting up a shared space for self-employed people to make 3D chocolate with? Um, less so than that. It's more of a space where we can experiment and, and make the prototypes. So you need to, as, as, like, a, like a, a design studio, you would um, have an idea, um, test that idea, and then make it into a reality. That's, that's what this um, maker space or the Makers Guild is there for, is for people to develop products in and one of the showcase product projects is what 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 i'm doing right now it's it's developing that device so you're saying that the the ways that the the people that are in the maker space uh, they're there the members and how they how they come up with ideas and create concepts and their hypotheses for example you can yep. you can extrapolate the exact same thought process and apply it for medical research and data elsewhere yeah Ex- exactly um because it's because again it's man-made it's um when, when you're talking about collecting data it's you're working with the healthcare professionals and also patients so that's again user experience how do you do that properly how do you make it so that the patients are are, are less stressed in the in, when you're attached to uh like hundreds of wires or not that many of that's kind of um exaggerated but um and 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 also how efficient the data is then handled from from a healthcare point of view because at the moment it might be quite manual which would take time away from providing a quality care um to patients and also those who are affected by uh, any sorts of illness and and all the way from doing that from instead of being admitted to hospitals for observation you can do it wherever in the world that kind of mentality so it's 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 what, what, what I'm working on is, is how to do that properly and also the security aspects, um, the device and how people would have, would um, interact with this device and how would they wear this device, how would they then use that and, and how would that integrate with their lives kind of kind of mentality. So it's, it's all about the user, user research and user experience research and how to do that better than it is today. What are your thoughts on apps like Babylon where there's like remote viewing and prescriptions yeah um it's it's one of one of the stepping stones um in in terms of remote healthcare, um which is brilliant um but then again it's how do you extrapolate data from the patients correctly and also um not in a way that could be interfered um like like there's research going on in uh, real time and remote monitoring which um, apps like Babylon might be getting into in the future because you, you need that to do remote um, observations. Um, but at the moment, because everything is you, remotely talking to 
healthcare professionals in, in, in app forms from another. Um, how do you get that data from the patient accurately? Is, is the, this the main problem? I'm guessing you're going to have things like uh, double-blind tests as well as self-fulfilling prophecies, placebo effect, also the nocebo effect. These are the things that are going to mess up the data. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's even to the point where language skills might might be a problem because not a lot of people would know about medical terminology. So I'm just ill, I've got a headache. Okay, what is what's the difference between a headache and a migraine type thing? Is is yeah, ex- exactly. But some people might not know that because of um, the way it's been described to them from from a young age, or or it hasn't been properly. Um, uh, read a dictionary for example you don't read every single dictionary to know know what all the words mean you just kind of know it from talking to other people yeah i won't bother with too much of the understanding because it deep <laughs> all sorts of crazy massive words and streptococcus and all this and beyond and it's like i'll just stick with the basics understanding and what to do and how to how to stay healthy um that is pretty cool that's that's quite a stretch though that is don't you th- don't, don't you think with regard to that research and starting the the own uh, the own company, you know, the own own and social uh, social uh, enterprise company. Because you said you didn't want to be um, an entrepreneur, but you got into it, and you said that yeah, you you said that you also tried to get away from that dogma or the doctrine of going out there, going out there and getting a job. Can you elaborate on that as well, please? Um, it's it's. So what I what I see as a term, I don't describe myself as an entrepreneur. I just problem solve. It's other people who put that title to me, and I'm there going, okay, if that's a title people say that I am, I'm maybe that. I don't know. Yeah, but it's a schema. It's just a, rather than saying all these words, it's just oh, you're this. It's yeah, easier, but less less brain power. It, 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 it is, but when when you condense it down to one word, it kind of loses its its, its meaning. And that's why we have these podcasts. Thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but but yeah, um, in in terms of the 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 whole getting your own job type, uh, well not not getting your own job because I've made my own job essentially, but um, getting a job to working for else someone else, for example, um, I've I've done that. But then again, it's it's in the, in that area of kind of the point of graduate depression type thing where you you spent most of your life in education. And then you're somehow thrust into the, the the competing world of work, and and that can have a negative effect or a positive effect depending on who you are. And um, in in some cases, being what in my case self-employed is is actually worked out better than trying to compete for a job because I've I've yes been self-employed. You still need to compete in in the work world for clients for for different things as I do a lot of CGI work for companies. Um, but it's it's having that opportunity to do so at, at, at um, an earlier stage and teaching stu- new students to think about, OK, it's not just one way to go out there and work. There's plenty of other ways to do so that might be more beneficial to what we are now instead of competing for a long term job that you may or may not like at, um, six months on, um, which is some of the problems I've had is is. Um, working for a company um although the company was amazing the the this the some of the some of the direct um above supervisors for example um might might have a, a different way of working to what you're used to or what um you've liked to in terms of ethics or um your own core self-belief and you, if, if if that's been disrupted then you as a person, you're, you're giving up on something that might that might actually be useful in in, in a different situation. So so from from that, it's it's not necessarily kind of avoiding getting a job because uh, fundamentally everyone has a job in in some form or another. It's it's just um, thinking what you can do back for the community that you can you, you're you're surrounded by, and and thinking of. Okay, it's, it's not just go out there and get a job. It's I can actually be socially responsible and still get um, paid for it, or or actually help other people achieve what they wanted to to achieve, which is 
again, again, it's it's a job in itself, and there there are whole entire industries on that, and there's there's government departments on trying to get people to to research more in different technologies, and and but if you're if you're trapped in a nine to five job, then then you don't have the energy to do so. So so it's it's it's. It's a fine line, and I won't say which one's better and which one's which one's worse because it's 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 a difficult and um, position to take, and also everyone's different. Yeah, I find that's one of those times where you gotta you gotta find the energy at the end of the day. There's yeah, that nine to five, which is a living. But then say the six to nine or six to ten, that's the adventure. That that's the that's the that's the getting ahead bit. Yeah, and and uh, the Makers Guild, um, we open from nine in the morning to eight in the evening, and um, we every everyone who goes there, are, are just they, they end up spending the whole entire day there. Um, we who run who who run the space, we we just essentially live in it. We we do take breaks and do we do do whatever we need to do with family and and also taking holidays, um, but. Is that freedom to explore, which gives people more energy than than trying to stick to a job that that you fundamentally might not want to do, what you might want to do, but it's it's that same thing over and over and over again. And what we do is every day is slightly different to 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 the last couple of weeks, or every day is actually fundamentally it's just completely different, and we throw the book out the window. Yeah, and speaking of uh, doing things over and over again, you mentioned earlier the core self belief. When you were at university, or or something like that, in your journey, yeah, I noticed that when when I was two thirds through university myself, maybe a core self belief, or I, I just felt that this isn't quite me. I I felt that I'm more of a leader, I'm more of in charge, or a visionary, a big picture, as opposed to behind the scenes administrator or bureaucrat or whatever. I felt that I was more in charge, more of a director, a producer, as opposed to behind the scenes. I just felt that. Yeah, and that started to metastasize or spread. It started to to, to to develop later on, and it started yeah, it started to spread essentially, and it, it accumulated in like uh, 2014, starting all this entrepreneur stuff, and that leads to one thing and leads to another, and it's like a change over time. So, what, what what did you? What was your core self belief before and after you know this? What was your transition? You know, what, what do you think your story was? Yeah. Um. So during the university time, so this this was back in, uh, when I graduated in 2013. Um. It's all my projects were about trying to fix something that's wrong in the world. Um. In in product design. Um. That's what my degree was in. So my my, my last project was was what I'm doing for my research right now, which it just had a really long hiatus in terms of thinking about it in in between finding a job and, and doing everything and then going, oh, I should go back to university to, to, to carry on this project is, is trying to, um, fix what, what we have here as the, as the NHS. Um, like I had family going into hospital for an extended period of time. And every time I go, it's like, there's a problem wrong with this. There's a problem wrong with that. It's like, why is there a problem with everything? And then you switching on the product design brain and, and looking from uh, a user experience perspective that everything everyone is trying to fight against. They're fighting against the equipment. They're fighting against illness. It's, it's, it's that. It's wanting to fix that, which is what my core, core, core self is, is wanting to solve problems. And then when I, when I graduated and then, and then I started working for companies and started, started doing lots of small jobs for, in, in terms of freelancing, it's, again, it's fixing what they want, but fundamentally they're, what they want is, is profit and what to, to sell things and, and to do that. And, and it's not giving back to the community. It's just fueling. Um, let's say I worked for, uh, um, for a brief, period of time is designing jewelry um um even even though the, the the designs wasn't taken up and um it got to the point where okay this this isn't this is this is fueling a bit of of the world where everyone's trying to fight against each other to be 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 the one who's got the most sparkly things um which was different from what i tried to what what I'm trying to do is trying to fix fix some part of the world that that looks like I've got um, a chance of doing and not doing that it kind of you're fighting against yourself and then 
I found an excuse um, during um, working for a company halfway through that is goes I should actually seriously consider going back and do a research degree um, in, and, and use that as an excuse to quit um, which was uh, quite a, a funny conversation um, but then yeah going through that process and going to university again it's it's seeing that those who don't have the opportunity to go back into university to to use that equipment that there, there's a whole entire niche um we're not it's actually not not even a niche it's the majority of people who don't get the experience get to experience that um how do you get them the skills needed to go into that industry or even just spark off that interest is is to have the university type environment but make it public so, so that's the reason why we created the makers guild and um from that and with help with the university as well and th- um, and that at the same time doing the research for this for this medical device that i'm working on that is that is pretty cool and what can you say about the medical device um well it's just been submitted and 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 gone into review so i can't actually say much about it even though i already explained it um but but it's 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 getting to the point where as as a brief for a phd it should be it should be all right and my supervisor all believes in it and he's been talking to everyone um in his in his uh cohort about it and um it's it's yeah it's it needs to be developed in in some form or another and but although someone else out there in the world might be developing it already so but having more of the same thing isn't actually that bad you know you can you can check trade knowledge from that yeah there's a, there's a thing that I've coined called Nanshev's Law, which says that anything that can be physically created will eventually be created. Yeah, if exactly. If it exists within the laws of physics and all the laws of science and beyond, then it will eventually be created because the human mind is infinitely complicated that the mind will come up with it and create anything that's possible, including this law. And including, yeah, including that. exactly. It's, it's like um, flight, for example, the hummingbird and the hummingbird moth. Their flight mechanics exactly the same, but they're completely different animals in in, in terms of the spectrum. The ones are, one's a bird and one's an insect. So, but their flight mechanics are exactly the same. So, in nature, it, it it happens as well. Yeah. So, as we slowly wrap up this podcast, what are you what are you working on next, and what's next for you? Um, I'm I'm. Currently, there's there's a few other projects that that are what I call fun projects. So, um, I'm working on a new type of drone, so um, a new 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 type of um, flying thing that, that that might might or not might not be a benefit. Um, it, it's just a, a new way of doing things because I used to des- I used uh, for a job design drones for a living, um, and um, that's a showcase project for um, engineering at the Makers Guild. And, and seeing what we can do, and, and from that it might be, it might spawn um, a series of uh, different engineering YouTube videos, or not engineering YouTube videos, just just um, things that might explode YouTube videos um, that are in that that will be filmed in our makerspace in, at the Makers Guild, um, and also showcasing the creative industry in Portsmouth um, as 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 a growing underground scene or an overground scene. Um, it's it's encouraging more of people doing creative engineering or arts and crafts and everything like that is is what we want to do and 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 um, try and do affect that on the government level which might be quite interesting but um, it might not work on that project but um, we we are working on a lot a lot of um, classes and workshops and events um, in in the next couple of months. What do you think's wrong with the drones right now? Um, I I got cut a lot of times with the propellers, so you can imagine um, if if there's one one there there is a uh, a way to to stop that from happening, but there's there's also another way to um, to completely um, ne- negate having exposed propellers in some form or another. So um, you, you think back to Harrier jump jets, for example, the way they 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 can hover um, is 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 what I'm thinking of how in in, in terms of designing designing these um, flying machines or drones that um, could do 
the same mechanics and see how that works. So, so, and, and that in tow would teach, say, the homeschool children or going into secondary schools and, and, and saying like, this is, this has been done as from a different industry perspective, but you're applying that knowledge into something completely different that may or may not work, but it's that application of knowledge that would create more things that are new, new innovation. Um, so you don't have to think it can be one thing or another. Well, I, I just find that drones these days are a bit loud and they're a bit small. But I can tell yeah. that in 10 or so years, because of Moore's Law, they'll get bigger and faster and quieter and, and, and cheaper and much more efficient. Yeah, that that's definitely one of the ways of... Um, the big like solo impulses, um, the size of an A380 um, aircraft um, in terms of wingspan, but it's it's just full of um, solar panels, and that's been flying around the world, um, just powered by the sun. And that itself, can, it, there is a human version and also a, 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 a non-human one, which itself is a drone by 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 nature. So it's so it's 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 getting more complicated, and it's it's just um, seeing what innovation can happen, and see if I can get some people to be more interested in engineering. That, that, but hang on, that A three eighty, that solar panel one, that went around the world. That was ages ago, wasn't it? Like this year, didn't it? it finished like four yeah. or five months ago. Yeah, and exactly. It's it's and, and but there are other versions flying and being tested. Um, uh, I'm not entirely sure on, on the names off the top of my head, but but everyone's been testing something or other um, around the world, and and it's, it's just there's so much there's so much that that can't be like you, you can you can name them all, um, but you would all, 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 always miss a few. So yeah, and I also heard that Facebook are they had this plans or this concepts to have this this like drone flying yeah. over parts of Africa that had internet connection. Yeah, yeah, that, and, and that and that's something that um, could happen. Um, you, you never know. Um, um, that could be a thing, but they are testing it. That's 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 the thing. So, so um, the more people that has has the opportunity to build things and test things, then then the the more opportunities there are for it to be successful. So that's that's one of the reasons why we created the Makers Guild. Yeah, it's a process of trial and error, or as I was told, yeah. it's trial and success. Yeah, ex- yeah, it's it's learning from failure, and that's the best way forward. That is, it's cheaper to learn from other people's mistakes as opposed to your own. Yeah, um, I, I go by a rule of um, fail fast, fail cheaply, and fail smart. Oh yeah, exactly. That's also wait. Say that again, please. Actually, fail fast, fail cheaply, and fail smart. Fail fast, cheaply, and smart. Yeah, I like that. Fast, cheaply, and smart. Yeah, that's quite clever. I like that one a lot. <laughs> uh, I like that one a lot. Although, yeah, well, that's cheap. What was it again? Fast, cheaply, and smart. Yep. Now, let's do it alphabetical order. Cheap, fast, and smart instead. That's easy to remember. Yep. Go for it. <laughs> that way, it's it's. I put fast first because you want to learn as quickly as possible. So, and and then from that, you, you, from that, it's it's as quickly as possible. It also means that if if you fail really expensively, that's an expensive lesson. So it's finding a way to do it cheaply as well and then smart is obviously learning from it and and and, and seeing what you can do afterwards yeah post-mortem reflection and action realizing the mistake you made yeah very important yeah. It's, it's cheaper to learn from other people's mistakes as opposed to your own exactly so and it's quicker as well oh yeah oh exactly convergence rate <laughs> economics there's a convergence rate Are you familiar with that um i've heard of it yeah I've, I've i think i've got something in my head that might not be it but if someone if someone if someone leads the way, it takes them fifty years to master this skill. They write a, write a book about it, or take it ten years to write a book about uh, write, ten years, and they write a book about it. Then, and you read that book in say a day or whatever, and you come to the same conclusion, the same lesson that took them ten years, it saves you so much more time. Exactly. Yeah. Just like doing things sooner. Exactly. Yeah. So um, as we wrap up, though, what is the best way for the audience to get in touch with you? Um. Best ways through email and um, yeah. So, do you want me to say it now or do you want to post it? We'll do both. Okay, uh, it's info at makers guild dot com. Okay, any other way? 
Uh, that is the direct way to contact us at the moment because we're, we're, we're still setting up most of our IT stuff. Um, because we, we've prioritized the, um, the space more than, than, than the virtual presence, um, apart from social media, um, more, more over, over, yeah, do, doing, doing the IT stuff at the moment, but, but that's, that's still in our plans. Um, so that, that's, that's one way. If you want, if people want to contact me directly, then, um, I've got my, my email would be m at u u hyphen u dot uk. Okay. And for the carry on question, what do you want the next guest to answer? Oh. That that's I haven't thought of that something. Um let's see. Well off the top of my head. Um Ooh. I've got something in my head that that might be a bit confusing, but I'll say it anyway. Um if they had the chance to revisit a project, how would they make sure it fails I like that one a lot oh, that, that reminded me of something that I can't remember what it was now ensuring something fails Yeah, apart from the fail fast, cheap and smart there was, was something that reminded me of but I can't remember what it was now yeah and it has to be a successful project okay all right, cool. I'll, I'll ask that for the next person. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Is is it's 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 a way that okay, you can find the flaws in what your project was. It, that that's that's the that the way. Obviously, the the whole learn fast, learn cheaply, or fail fast, fail cheaply. Um, the thing of it is 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 taking a project that's successful and then seeing if 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 you can make it fail fast, how would you do it? And then and then from that, it's like oh, that's something to avoid next time. Yeah, I agree. Avoid next time. Yeah, definitely. That's the way forward. But Ming, it was great having you on the show. Thank you very much for having me.